Sakina. Thank you for the question, Sakina. So I, I think a lot of Canadians, when we look back at our history, we're proud of the fact that we played a really important role around the world as, as human rights defenders, as a country that promoted diplomacy, that was involved in peacekeeping. And then under the very difficult years of Harper, we lost a lot of that reputation on the world stage. We thought that we would be back on the world stage with Mr. Trudeau. He said, we're back. <laughs> and it didn't really turn out that we were back. Because you know some of the things that he's done foreign policy wise that I would not do. You know, he he is selling arms. Mr. Trudeau is allowing arms to be sold to Saudi Arabia. Now we've got a clause that says that you can evaluate the human rights of another country and make a decision if arms should be sold to that country. Now Saudi Arabia is implicated in the murder of a journalist, is killing people in Yemen and oppressing its own people. If there's not a better case to say that the human rights are being violated and we need to immediately end that arms deal, I can't think of another example. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one example. You mentioned Kashmir, and you know, things are, it's always tough when you talk about international issues. It's hard to know all the details. But I think there's a couple of clear signs of when something's going wrong. When a country bans the media, when they turn off cell phones and, tele and telephone communications, we know that probably something bad is going on. And so when India did a media blackout, cut cell phones, cut telephones, it became very clear that they were covering up some very horrible human rights violations. And so to the people of Kashmir, that's what happened to them. I want the brothers and sisters and friends of, in Kashmir to know that we stand with you, that it's wrong what's happening to you, and that Canada should always denounce human rights violations wherever they occur around the world. Kashmir loves you.